Before we pass it on to this uh, exceptional personality, a great trader, Mr. Jens, uh, I would like to just walk you through uh, very quickly to our social media. So in case you haven't yet, I will uh, put the addresses on the chat below. So this is the YouTube channel, Admirals. We would appreciate if you like and subscribe the videos and also it's going to be very useful for you. When you scroll down, you find the trading spotlight and you can see all Jens webinar. Here are also my webinars and Paul's webinar. So uh, because we cover different subjects all the time, it's going to be a no brainer, uh, valuable information for you guys. And also here we have uh, from other traders uh, webinars. The next one is the Instagram account. Then now it's just, I can say the Instagram, it's getting on fire. Uh, people from all over the world, they engaged more and more and more with our reels and posts and, uh, and stories. Uh, we put so much valuable content here and I will definitely, definitely encourage everyone to make sure uh, that you follow admirals on Instagram. And last one, the Telegram channel. Here we post all the time when we're going to go live. So you have the opportunity just in case maybe you missed an email or something. Instagram is going to just send you the notification uh, right on time. Okay, so let me just quickly put the, um, uh, the details. Just bear with me. Okay, here are the website, the, the links, guys, to uh, copy paste them on your browser and make sure you like and subscribe the channels. So without uh, saying anything more, let me find the control. So I will share it. I'll pass it on to Jens. Okay. Jens, the mic and the screen, it's all yours. It's lovely to see you again. How hello, are you doing? Hello, Theo. That was, that was too much. Exceptional personality. <laughs> oh, man, you are an exceptional personality, an exceptional That trader. was too Come much. <laughs> you are leading us through the uh, non-farm payrolls, the stock uh, market. So <laughs> I'm not used to, to such kind words. I'm a married guy. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a married guy, man. Too. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, yeah. So um, let's start for today. Let's trade the NFPs. Um, and I'm very happy to be here today once again. Um, and uh, we just saw the release of the non-farm payrolls uh, a few minutes ago. And I don't want to make it um, um, only an, an event like let's have a look at the non-farm payrolls and then um, um, just uh, um, I mean, I go through it and, and formulate some, some trading ideas. But I think um, we should probably use this event today um, to dig deeper also in uh, the, the depths to some extent of um, fundamental analysis and, and how to use it in your trading. Um, in fact, I, I, um, I'm planning to, to make this um, more of um, a part of, of, the, of the upcoming webinars. We will also have, um, I think, in two weeks from now, if I'm not mistaken, um, five days before the Fed. So today is like, um, let's trade the NFPs and make it a little like how to interpret it and then use it in your trading. But um, in two weeks from now, we will dig deeper into another very interesting fundamental driver, which also plays a part here of um, um, today's presentation. In fact, the, the Fed and um, um, the, the FOMC meeting here and the decision on, on, on rates. And um, then the idea is, so first of all, why is this of importance? Today, the employment situation, why is it right now an um, exceptional um, 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 importance for market participants to, to, to have a look? Why do markets move? Um, why does it matter in general? And then use this knowledge and 
build an idea, a hypothesis, respectively, a game plan around it and which markets could be affected the most. In fact, um, right now, I think equities are very, very interesting, especially the, the Qs, respectively, the NASDAQ 100 in this context, especially now with the drive above 12,300 points after the numbers came in. I think this is a strong reaction, by the way. I'm probably even more bullish now, the reaction uh, than we um, um, would have seen if the numbers came in below expectations. But this is exactly um, what I was thinking about um, and how to, to dig deeper into a fundamental analysis, give you some um, ideas on why this matters from a theoretical perspective, and then use the knowledge from a theoretical standpoint and build a hypothesis game plan um, and use it in the current market environment. Before we start, um, here is the risk disclaimer. Very important to read it carefully. Um, so we have a high, um, um, highly anticipated and, and high volatile uh, high volatility event, in fact. So, um, and we will formulate ideas and not just a hypothesis, but probably also a game plan. If there will be any trades, please be aware um, that you take full responsibility um, um, here when taking trades based on these ideas. Um, okay. So it's purely educational content we provide to you here. And um, if you want to take a trade on the, uh, on, on the information, please be aware that you take full responsibility and um, are solely responsible for the risks um, involved in taking these trades. So everything I present to you is purely educational. Um, and then here is uh, the broker behind this. So I don't need to, to uh, dig too deep into, into Admirals as a broker behind this because Theo um, 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 did already um, uh, the job here. And thus we will head here through the one world, one broker slide and um, want to right now drive dig deeper into and go into the depths here of um, today's um, employment report and why the non payrolls especially but also why every employment number um, which was presented in the last days for example um, the jolts on Tuesday and um, the ADP data set on, on um, Wednesday for example why this data matters so this is the theoretical um, 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 uh, the, the, the theoretical uh, part in this context. And I just realized, by the way, I had a plan, but I will, I will do it otherwise. So um, the next slide was of importance. I had to change it back. I will, I will let you know why in a few seconds. But first of all, let's answer the question. So why are employment numbers of interest? Um, so this is here. Um, probably it's, it's a little, little um, um, problematic because here this should be let me just see if I can change this um, in, in this presentation here. Let me just see. Um, it should be an arrow probably. And then we should also see an arrow, arrow here. No? Okay. So because these um, um, different points, they, they build on each other. Let's probably put it that way. So that means like... Um, Okay, that was a little suboptimal. So it's uh, not that 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 these uh, bullet points are um, independently from each other, but it's like um, a step by step by step why the, the numbers matter. And then in this context, um, we will um, 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 see that th that these these um, 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 components play with each other. Let's say so. Why are employment numbers in, um, of interest? So confidence in the economy, respectively, and the overall political um, um, landscape is positive, is good. There's trust in the um, 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 politicians, for example. Usually, this is something which results in people looking into a prosperous future, let's say. So in, in fact, it's the complete opposite of, of the current situation right now. So for example, I'm located in Berlin in Germany. Um, you probably followed um, uh, the the developments here in the um, in the media around uh, the energy situation, um, and um, to some extent, I have the feeling that the world is laughing um, at us right now. It's shaking their heads in disbelief what's currently going on and why um, Germany is is um, I'm doing what it's doing, especially the politicians, um, especially in terms of um, 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 what is now the the, the um, government planning to do to cap electricity um, uh, bills, respectively uh, gas prices um, in this context, for example, which naturally affects the overall outlook for the German economy. And if you now, um, uh, if, if you now have a small business, for example, um, right now, 
you're you're um, looking in a dark future. You don't know um, what the bill will look like. Um, and the reason for that is because there's an explosion in, in prices, um, there's uh, um, inflation, and the responsibility is solely um, on the politicians here in Germany. Um, so, and that, that's um, um, quite similar everywhere around the world. And so we are not looking into a prosperous future. If that's not the case, um, and they're, they're, let's say, turning um, the, the sinking ship right now, and uh, there is some, um, some politicians or a party which delivers an answer to all the problems we look into, for example, um, then, well, there is trust and, and there is a the good outlook for the future and we're willing to invest. In my case, um, I'm currently not thinking about um, I'm building a business here, but instead uh, pack my bags, take my family and head to another country where this outlook is given and we can have a nice life and where we can build a business and, and build a prosperous future for us. So right now, um, so it's the current it's an environment in which we find um, 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 a complete different outlook here. But let's assume we are looking into this prosperous future because there's trust in the politicians and and and, and they follow they, they follow their 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 agenda, not just their agenda, but also they um, care about not just the people from a social perspective, but also for the people in terms of um, 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 business wise. Understand that a thriving business results in what? Well, people, or in this case, um, um, employers or factory, um, um, or um, 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 uh, not factories, but um, companies um, who are probably running factories will increase their orders. Um, and therefore, well, what do you need? Um, you will, or all in all, next step is, well, usually you will see an increasing industrial production. And um, the question now is certainly um, what will happen is naturally to, to meet the higher demand, um, there, there will be higher investment. And the higher investment means we have to hire more people to increase the orders in our factories even more. So we employ people. So naturally, that means that um, this is a very, very um, 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 sensitive number, let's say. Employment situation gives a quite direct view on um, how are things going in the overall economy. So if lots of jobs are created and people are hired, well, this is usually a positive sign because there's obviously a prosperous outlook in the future or also over the last 10 years, probably there was lots of cheap money um, which was sent to work, let's say. But all in all, the overall environment was, um, well, we, we have to, to, to meet the high demand from people and thus we have to hire people. So employment, um, or unemployment rates in this context dropped, and certainly that was a that was a clear sign that um, we are looking into um, a good future here. So, what happens if people have a job? Well, certainly they make money, and um, the good thing is the more money a company makes, then usually you um, not just hire more people, but you also pay them quite good salaries because there is um, 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 a competition among these companies with each other. And the best guys um, who will produce the best products, um, who will then result in higher demand in your high quality products, um, will usually um, um, go to where they get their most money. For, for, for doing their jobs. So that's usually um, then resulting naturally in not just hiring more people, but also paying them more money. And um, that usually results naturally in an increased consumption, which means like um, you, you have a higher propensity here um, and to consume. So there's more people who have worked, who have more money, who will naturally demand more goods well, probably not just consume um, um, luxury goods, but, but, but in general, there will be um, a strong demand on a broad scale, which will then result naturally in higher economic growth and rising inflation. So this, you can already see this, this is a, a theoretical um, um, concept here, um, because the higher, the rising, uh, the rising inflation um, is uh, right now not resulting out of the fact that there are so much um, um, people having a job and um, that, they, that they, they have such good um, 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 income. But right now it's because the printing press is running um, and this for nearly a decade right now. And um, then you see a cut in this case of um, um, goods which are, which are produced. So, um, and there's lots of money chasing fewer goods, which is naturally driving inflation higher. Um, this 
this is this is the other part. So it's not a demand driven inflation we currently find ourselves in, but it's a supply driven. Um, so there's not enough supply um, which is chased by lots of money, which is printed by inflation uh, by, by by central banks driving inflation higher than in this context. But usually, what you see as higher economic growth usually results in higher inflation and inflation expectations, which is then naturally resulting in central banks hiking interest rates. So right now, um, and, and you can see this, uh, we, we try to avoid an overheat of the economy in this case, and we can also turn the tide here and consider this from another perspective as I already started. Let's assume we have no confidence in the overall economic outlook. I just, by the way, I just talked to a friend, uh, five, 10, 20 minutes ago or something like that. I, I, I'm, I'm, I was, I was I'm, I'm having him on the phone um, and, and discussing our plans for, for the weekend. And um, so he was like, um, I was like, um, are, you, are you available um, earlier today? Because um, we had to the gym and have some fun together, working out together. And he says, well, yes, sure, I will be there. And I was like, oh, that's, that's surprising uh, because he's also self-employed. I mean, he can usually manage his, his days um, as, he, as he wishes, but usually um, he has a, um, um, uh, he, he, he's a demanded person, let's put it that way. So, um, and I said, everything cool? Well, he says, well, what we, we're currently seeing is that, that people are not willing to invest anymore. So they're, they're um, cutting back their, their exposure. Um, and it's not that, that he's running out of work. So um, as, as someone who is right now um, um, in, in high demand, by the way, I'm just looking for the word I'm, I'm missing. Let me just see what... Handyman. Well, that's nice. So a handyman. He's in handyman. He's a handyman. So, um, and he's like, uh, let's, let's say a, a painter. Is this, is this correct? Can we say that? I think so. I think so. Yeah. No, that's a, it's a, it's a painter. So he's a handyman and a painter. And um, um, you probably have, have, have found it out yourself already that um, um, handy men in this case are, um, there's a high demand for them. Uh, he can certainly meet the demand, but the, the work he has to do is not the work he used, he was used to do over the last years. And he can certainly see that demand is um, diminishing. It's still that, that he's in good shape, everything's cool, but still you can already see um, that the overall outlook for the economy is um, darkening with all the, the outlook and in terms of electricity bills and so on and so forth. Um, politicians are um, making not so smart comments, let's say, put it that way, which usually results in what? Well, decreasing orders in factories, results in decreasing industrial production, which is then meaning that there is certainly still demand, but um, the demand is clearly diminishing. So it's clearly going down, which means you are firing, you're laying off people. Which is something you can not just see um, in, in smaller businesses, but also the big companies doing that. Amazon is doing it. Um, I just, we, we had numbers or um, um, a release here from Snap, I think it was, was on Wednesday today. I think so. Yeah. Wednesday after hours, um, they were, um, they were saying, uh, that they are laying off something like um, 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 uh, twenty percent of their of their employees. Well, the the, the result in the share was the stock rose sharply um, because it was something which could be expected after the last um, earnings release. But still, it was something which is showing okay they are cutting cutting down their investment, so they're they're um, saving money, and thus there's more money um, um, which can then be forwarded to to um, um, shareholders in this context. But coming back, so you're you're cutting jobs, you're laying them off, you 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 firing people, so which which means um, that people are happy to get a job if they just lost their job and they're willing to take it even if they're um, 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 less compensated. So there's not that, it's not that, that, that um, 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 companies are looking for people, but it's like they say, well, we are looking for really quality guys. We're willing to pay them good money, but it's what we pay them and it, what we can afford them to pay. So on the other hand, so if you have inflation skyrocketing, well, certainly you will, you can't pay the money um, um, you used to pay these guys. Thus, you see um, um, they are not as good compensated as they used to be. So there's less money which can be spent, which means then if less money is spent, you have a decrease in consumption. This is currently exactly what we get to see. So there's what well, we could also call this kind of a deleveraging process taking place, which is which will naturally over time drive inflation lower. But 
inflation already skyrocketed after this 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 massive monetary um, experiment with quantitative easing and so on and so forth. So we made inflation and the potential uh, push higher here um, um, already a topic several several years ago. I think I think I would say 2020 we started um, here within our uh, trading spotlight webinars, for example, to talk about um, rising inflation and what what you can do, not just in terms of a rising inflation, but also in a recession, which comes. So it's not that it's a big surprise, but what we now see is that um, that overall people are losing their jobs. Unemployment rate is ticking up. It's not that it's spiking higher, but it's ticking up while inflation is still high. So now you have the central banks, which are trying to drive inflation lower even further and accelerate this process, <clears throat> take even more money from companies which can't afford uh, the workers anymore, which means that there will naturally um, a tendency that the overall economy will go down and the economic growth will massively drop in this context. The problem is if you do this too aggressively, now you have the problem that, um, well, there, there's social unrest probably um, I'm resulting out of this. So this is right now a discussion which is going on. So long things short, and, and why we talk that interestingly about this is it massively affects what will happen in terms of the next steps in terms of hikes rate hikes then from central banks. And while we are looking at the non-farm payroll, certainly we'll look here at the Fed and what, what the Fed will do. So that's the screenshot here from the so-called Fed watch tool. Um, I, can, I can share this, the link here, by the way. Let me just see. Um, and it's completely for free. We'll head over to um, the, the um, Fed watch tool in a few seconds. But what we will do here is Fed watch tool. So I took the screenshot before the numbers were released. And what you can see is that right now with the upcoming FAT event on the 21st of September, um, market participants are expecting the FAT to hike rates by 74 um, 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 percent here. Chance that there will be a 75 basis point rate hike by 74 percent. So the majority of market participants, three out of four, expecting the Fed to go for another 75 basis point rate hike. Problem is, if you go too aggressive with your restrictive monetary policy outlook, this usually drives equity prices lower because there's less money to be spent in terms of or less money to, to, to invest, um, which will naturally dampen the overall outlook for the um, 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 economy we are looking at here. So, and the thing now is that right now, as you as you may have seen, and now we head over here to the to the um, admirals chart. You can see that already last week, with the comments from um, Fed Chairman Jay Powell in um, Jackson Hole, um, you've seen that that the market drove was driven ex exceptionally aggressively lower, as you can see here, and we had it lower also um, over the last trading days with his wording being very restrictive when he said, well, we are willing to forcefully bring inflation down. This is like, well, we are really um, expect us to hike probably even more aggressive in the future. So an interesting thing is that this was the main driver over the last six to eight months to um, um, here on the downside and for this bear market in which we find ourselves in when looking at the NASDAQ, for example. So the reason um, we, 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 we massively dropped was not just the geopolitical tensions which we currently see, but it was mainly because um, the, um, the Fed is taking um, uh, liquidity out of the system. So now you can see that uh, we, we already had it into a recession, as at least in my personal um, definition. So there are several ways to define a recession, and we'll um, um, go through this in, in further detail in upcoming webinars. But usually you can say, if you have two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth, as we have um, in the US, so for the first quarter and the second quarter, then you find yourself already in a recession. There's other ways to um, anticipate that there's a recession coming, respectively, we find ourselves in. It's like, for example, an inversion in the yield curve, so that the um, 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 short-term yields are higher than longer-term yields, for example. But putting all this together, we can see that we already let some air out of the balloon, probably. We can put it that way. And we saw um, 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 equities being driven aggressively lower, especially high beta stocks, tech stocks in this context, uh, which um, massively profited, for example, from, from the um, um, cheap liquidity that the Fed delivered, respectively also from the massive growth outlook.
Take a Peloton, for example, um, or take a Zoom. Look at the charts and you will see that these stocks went nearly vertical um, given the, the, the massive growth outlook after COVID, the pandemic hit and, and people having to stay at home, there were lockdowns and thus having a gym at home and a Peloton or doing a, a, a face-to-face call, for example, with the Zoom, everything went, went vertical, but the growth outlook was not sustainable. And thus you saw the sharp drop over the last months, even more aggressive than what we're currently seeing here, but it spills over to other um, tax sectors in this context. And so now the thing is um, that we are now at a point, especially with the upcoming midterm elections in the US, that um, we can say, well, letting some air out of the balloon and fighting inflation, well, this is certainly something which is of importance, but the problem is um, you have also political pressure, which you will naturally face because um, people will say the one responsible for um, this economic downturn is a guy called Joe Biden. It's the U.S. president right now. It's the Democratic Party. Um, and they're focusing on, um, let's say, some Vogue speech and, and um, 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 that, that the, the right people are able to demonstrate, but they are not taking care of our needs. And politicians... Um, are probably not the smartest guys in the room, but to some extent, they have a feeling for that. And if they don't feel it themselves, they still have um, advisors who help them out here. And they told them, certainly they did, especially with the upcoming midterm elections, guys, if we hike too aggressively and if we drive um, um, our economy in a deep recession, um, well, then we probably could face not just um, um, some political headwinds, but there's also the risk of some social unrest. What does this mean? Well, this means we have to make sure that people are not willing um, um, to, to go on the streets, but instead go to their jobs. And thus we have to deliver, even if inflation is right now spiking higher, we have to make sure that people um, or that companies, first of all, have money they can spend, they can invest, meaning they can hire or they have to hire people to then um, um, fulfill a stronger demand I'm here from a production perspective or, um, 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 or a bigger auto volume, however you might want to put it. So, which means, well, if we have right now an expectation before the non-farm payrolls of 74 market per, um, percent of market participants expecting the Fed to hike rates aggressively, well, then especially if the employment numbers come in below expectation, what we should expect is that the Fed has a higher motivation to not go as aggressive monetary wise than they probably would have if the sole um, 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 target was to drive inflation lower. But they have also to make sure that the employment situation um, can be considered stable, which means if numbers come in below expectations, so today, unemployment rate goes up, respectively, employment change goes down. Well, then usually you expect this, this um, 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 column here to go lower, which means if the driver on the short side for equities, in this case for the NASDAQ, lower was um, um, an outlook in terms of a restrictive central bank, well, a less restrictive central bank is usually considered bullish for equities, and thus we should go up. So this is exactly how we went into today's event. And as you can see right now, um, we are breaking already higher here. So you can see two minutes before the market opening, we started below 12,300 points, but now we saw already a sharp break higher. We already started to some extent yesterday, in fact, uh, but we don't want to make it too complicated here. What was the driver here? Probably we were a little too extended on the downside with what wise um, going anticipating um, 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 a less um, a strong outlook for the overall employment situation based on what I just already presented. So now we, we see the break higher here. Um, and this bullishness um, is something where respectively this overall outlook and this knowledge, this understanding of what currently is happening um, is something which um, um, helps us to formulate a hypothesis for today, respectively for the days to come, if we can hold this breakout region. So this is a pure technical aspect. So after consolidating here, um, now we see the break higher driven through um, let me just go here in a five minute chart. So this is the 14, um, uh, 230 um, um, German time. So 130 UK time, NFP candle, you see spike higher. And then five minutes later, we came in again into the breakout region 
and you see we hold this level and we are now making higher highs. Let's see if this is a sustainable move and, and if we continue to move higher. But first of all, that's a first bullish sign, which helps us then to expect more bullish, bullishness in the um, um, hours ahead. So now let's go, let's go back to, let's go back to um, this presentation and here now fulfill this theoretical aspect and what we saw before numbers were released with what we currently see. And therefore we had over, so by the way, this is my, my Twitter account and here are um, the numbers which came in. So numbers came in 315 against 298, which is surprising in fact, because um, ADP data, for example, came in um, way lower at 132 already on Wednesday. And usually this is a good indication, um, which already let me come to the conclusion that numbers are shouldn't be expected too strong. But the thing is, unemployment rate was higher. You can see 3.7% against 3.5 expected. So unemployment rate is ticking higher and thus, making the impression that there's a cool down uh, in the employment situation overall, which should, well, what should happen? Naturally, it should happen that this column comes down. So we update the side because it's not in real time. And then let's see where we stand. Ta-da, 62%. So we started again, let's have a look here at 74 before the event was released. So now numbers come in. And the thing is, well, we have our own interpretation. That's something very important. Um, I mean, the theoretical aspects behind this, um, well, might be clear to us, uh, but still it's when once we trade and use this um, um, knowledge and these data sets then to um, form a trade hypothesis, a game plan formulated and, and trade based on that, it we need to make sure that um, it's not just our interpretation of the numbers based on which we have a plan, a game plan. We will come to this in a, in a few seconds, but also to make sure um, that we follow the price action. So if we get um, um, now a drop here, for example, in this column as we got, but markets sell off, this is usually not what you would expect. And obviously we're now heading into even darker times. Even if we expect the Fed to not go as dovish or um, um, less restrictive as we expected, and even this is not pushing prices higher, even though we already um, um, saw a sharp drop on the downside, that's a very clear bearish sign um, and something to consider. But we don't want to overcomplicate things. So our hypothesis is numbers come in, in this case, less or weaker than expected, and this column should drop. So now we see, okay, numbers come in better than expected, it's a little better, probably it's in line. We can certainly here also say plus minus 20,000 is probably a release in line. But as you can see here, the expectation drops which is then resulting in what we would expect to happen, that the NASDAQ is pushing higher, as it does, as you can see here. Now we're coming in, and this is very interesting. So now look at, the, look at your time. It's 2.30 UK. So we have now the US market opening. And what we now want to see is, in fact, in fact, exactly that. It's not that we are going up in a, in a vertical straight line on the upside. But in fact, what I'd really like to see is now a retest of this breakout region and see whether we can hold it. So that means... If we're now coming in here and holding 12,300, or we see a quick flush lower and then are quickly rebid above that level, um, I consider this a first sign of strength. Probably, if, if you wonder how to trade this, probably um, we shouldn't go into this corrective move, but instead want to wait for a conviction. And, and how do I define a conviction respectively? What would be a conviction? I think if we make it above the opening print. So that means I expect this now to, to, to happen here, to flush lower, exactly what we, what we get to see, retest of the breakout region around 12,300. And then we say, okay, if we hold this level, we are still not long, but we want to go long once we hold this level, the breakout region after the release, and then break here above the opening print, which is around 12,400, I think, yeah, 12,400. And we would then make it above that level I think we have a good chance to close high of day, probably even higher. And we should also keep in mind that Monday, um, um, US equities are closed due to Labor Day. So there's um, um, also um, 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 shorter than, than usual trading period. US equities in general are not tradable in the US futures. So S&P, NASDAQ, and so on and so forth are, um, 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 are tradable. But I think 
till 6 p.m. UK, if I'm not mistaken. Not really sure about that. Um, but there's shortened trading hours. But then after that, we have a chance to probably um, 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 see further bullishness if this plays out. So now we follow the price action. We follow what the market delivers. If we now break below this breakout region, 12.3, well, then let's see if we can hold 12,200. If not, probably we should go for a trade on the short side because then the hypothesis is, is not correct. Our plan to say, okay, we see a price out of market um, um, participants pricing out a restrictive FAT via the FAT watch tool. They don't, um, or it is priced out. It is priced out, but market is not reacting bullish, which is a strong bearish sign. So this is what what I'm, I'm usually will read about um, in trading books, very good trading books like Market Wizards from Schwager, when um, um, legends of trading, probably fair way to put it, are talking about mental flexibility. So like you you have a hypothesis, you have a clear plan, you have you have um, um, something you want to see. You don't get it to see. That doesn't mean we are not taking the trade, but probably we are then heading for the other um, um, side of the of the, of the of the trade, not going the long side, but going for the short side. Let's let's just see how things play out. If if we break below twelve three right now, it doesn't look that way. Um, we can hold this level. If we don't hold, if we hold this level, and if we break now to new intraday highs, respectively, if we go above the opening print at twelve four, this is a bullish sign. Um, with a stop then shortly below the breakout region, it's something like 12.3, I'd, I'd probably say, depending a little on, on where the intraday lows can be found. And then going for, for a sharper bounce, probably in the daily chart. And let's probably take out here these lines that we can see a little clearer. So then we have a chance to go back to 12.6, 12.8 around this region, which will result naturally in the risk reward of three, probably four to one um, I'm here. But Again, what we want, what we have to see is holding 12.3 and then going through the opening um, 12,400. So this is purely on the NASDAQ. In fact, um, I also prepared something as you will, as you will see, by the way, um, we'll go through the, the presentation here a little further. This is for example, the Fed dot plot, um, something which is of importance and we'll dig deeper into in fact, um, the, the presentation around the Fed in two weeks. But um, what, you, what you have here is um, dots, as you can see in blue. And these are um, voting members of the FOMC. And this is their projection for 2022, respectively 2023. And um, what they say is in fact, or they, they are asked, they have to write down, where do they see um, the, 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 the rates in 2022, for example? And as you can see here that the majority in 2022 sees yields between 325 to 350 respectively, probably even a little higher, 350, 375 basis points. So this is the majority here. Um, and you can see, in fact, the majority among um, FOMC members is clearly be found between 325 and 50. Why is this of importance? Well, because this is what the market expects right now. And just imagine, just imagine we're going for 75 basis points at the next Fed meeting um, after this um, 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 employment release, the non-farm payroll release. Well, we are then, right now we are 20, 225, 250. 75 basis point higher than that is 300, 325. Well, we only have ammunition left for another 25 basis points then in November, respectively, more likely in December. So as you can see here, this is already um, 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 nearly it's fully priced in. In fact, the market is right now expecting more hawkishness, um, which you can't even find in the dot plot. It's not that this is 100% um, 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 set in stone here, but it's something to keep in mind. Um, market is very, very hawkish right now. And market expectations are above what the Fed herself is seeing for the future, respectively the upcoming months. So, which means if the market is too hawkish and the market starts to realize that it's too hawkish and starts to price out these columns here down to these levels, you will see that lots of market participants are probably caught on the wrong foot. They were probably caught um, um, in short positions in equities. They're probably caught in um, positions in, in um, 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 bonds, bond, T-note, whatever, short positions. Um, and they have to, to, to recalibrate their portfolio 
if they build a portfolio. And in this context, this price out here would mean that there's a short cover rally, for example, a short squeeze in equities higher. So this is the same idea, um, which is also playing a very important role when it comes here to our overall outlook for, for equities and why I tend to be more bullish um, 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 for in the current market environment than some other market participants who say, well, right now, um, um, the overall outlook does not justify an aggressive long position. I'm not saying you should be selective when, for example, choosing um, um, equities for your overall portfolio, but I'm saying I think the market is too restrictive, especially with the potential unrest resulting out of this restrictive, um, potentially to some extent also deleveraging market environment, which will naturally result in, um, in this case, the fat step up and help markets out. And, and, and let's say save the economy is probably a little too much, but at least deliver cheap liquidity and in this context, which will then mean that we are having a chance to push push higher from here if we get to see such a, such a price out. Um, let's come back to another part, which is very important when, when playing this. And now um, we went through this now in depth already, but um, you can see here the potential scenarios. Um, I was, in fact, you can see the likelihood is 30%. This is what I prepare every time I go into such an event. So um, I have now only the neutral scenario, the one we got to see. Um, you can see here, MFPs come in around expectation, 280 to 320. So when I'm saying, within a range of 20,000 plus, 20,000 minus. Um, this is what, where, where it comes from. I have the expectation of 300,000. And then I say unemployment rate still greater than 3.5%. This is exactly what we got to see. Um, I didn't have it um, as, a, as a highly likely event on the, on the radar, but um, based on this scenario and then saying, okay, what do you expect market to, to, to react, how I expect it to react? In case of the NQ100 as a NASDAQ, I'm saying before the event, um, I think it's neutral. Let's see how it works. I tend to the long side because I think most of this is much, most, most of it is priced in. Um, and I'm saying, well, I'm long if we recapture and hold 12,300, if we break the trend line, the trend line I'm, I'm referring to here, I'm talking about is, let me just go here, this one. So if we break this trend line, if we hold this trend line, um, so we all have seen this, this, this consolidation here right now. And now, and this is exactly why, why, I'm, why I'm to some extent happy to get to see the retest because now um, my, my bullish bias um, is um, 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 put to test, in fact. So we, we now have to show, bulls have to show, well, we can hold this level. After the breakout occurred, which happened, well, obviously, well, now market participants, bulls have to show, well, we can hold this level. If bulls can, and if we even drop this consolidation before the non-farm payroll is now on the downside, my overall hypothesis is short. And then I have to say, okay, um, we couldn't hold the breakout. We couldn't hold the lows of the consolidation. Now I tend to be short and expect probably another test of the weekly um, um, lows, which we, which we um, 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 saw over the last days of trading. Um, which means we're then going probably for another test of 12,000 into the weekly close. But right now, let's see if this if this plays out. So what I really, again, what I, what I want to see right now is we can hold this level, but I'm still, even if we can hold this, let's say for 20 minutes or something like that, 25, 30 minutes, this is not enough. What really, what I like to see in the current environment and, and, and with having seen also the very weak reaction to the ADPs on Wednesday, now I want to see clear confirmation that we, that we can clearly hold this level and push to new highs, that really bulls are stepping in and saying, well, yes, let's go on the upside. Um, and, and this really could result in a, in a sharper squeeze, but this needs some further clarification and, 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 and um, um, statement from market participants or market wise in this case so going above the, the the opening print in this context you can already see um so my main focus was clearly on the non-farm payrolls um on the nasdaq non-farm payrolls yes but also on the um, on the nasdaq i also prepared two scenarios here for gold respectively for the uh, usd jpy um so for for um, commodities respectively for the fx part um i say in case of the neutral um, um scenario I'm especially given the, the drive down to 1,700, 
I'm overall bullish, but given overall gold bearishness, I want to be long only if we can recapture and hold 1,720 here in this context. As far as I can see here so far, I think we haven't yet made it. No, we haven't. We, we have seen the spike higher. We've seen the spike higher, but we haven't made it back above the um, um, level around 1,720. And this is something where I say, well, this looks really weak. I really, I, right now, I don't want to be long gold. I can fully understand where this weakness comes from. So naturally, you will say gold is usually a US dollar hedge, which means um, currently we will see a strong demand for, for the US dollar. We are not going into too much depth and details now why this is the case, but um, all in all, you should expect demand for the US dollar to stay elevated, which is usually driving gold prices lower. It also means that, for example, in, in currencies which are currently crushed, like the euro, for several reasons, but also the JPY, um, if, you, if you look at these um, developments here in um, um, euro terms, gold in euro terms or gold in JPY terms, you will not see this, this sellout as we see it right now in, in, in the US dollar. That's a, a very important uh, note in this context. So in fact, in my portfolio right now, um, I have an outweight um, position on the US dollar, but I also have some gold. Um, but then I'm located in Berlin in Germany. Um, so that means I'm paying my bills in Euro. So I'm hatched Euro wise and, and making money on both, both ends of the, um, the trade, in fact, on the gold position, but also on my equity USD position on my, on my holdings in terms of trading accounts, for example. So my trading accounts run in a US dollar for, for several time right now. In fact, so I, I already started to, to build up um, uh, this, 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 the trading account US dollar wise at the beginning of 21. One so more nearly two years ago, um, so mainly because the main focus in my in my equities trading is U.S. dollar, um, 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 not U.S. dollar, um, U.S. equities, um, which means like um, it's easier for me to to um, um, calculate them. Right now, it's also easy because it's one to one um, parity in Euro USD, but still um, back then was more difficult and also given my overall very bearish outlook. So right now, I haven't seen that coming. Um, I saw some some headlines for the eurozone in general, but what's currently taking place that was where that that's something I, I haven't seen coming. But putting things into perspective here um, is gold overall looks bearish, but it depends on which currency you're looking at. So this is something to, to keep in mind. Uh, right now, I think the U.S. dollar will see um, um, some potential pull in at least, which is then potentially driving gold higher, but for being long and, and, and can really have a strong conviction that we are that we are um, a no down on the a down on the downside um, and, and and are probably running for for a run back up to 1,800. I really want to see um, U.S. dollar stabilizing, which is not what I'm currently seeing, in fact, and that's why I'm I'm a little more skeptical gold wise. And also, I'd like to to give you um, an outlook here for dollar JPY. Um, what I haven't prepared yet, um, um, but probably will deliver in, in one of the upcoming webinars, is um, an outlook here or a picture which will show you that there's a high positive correlation between dollar JPY and 10 year T notes. So if yields go higher, you usually expect dollar JPY to go higher. The scenario we um, formulated here earlier in regards to the non farm payrolls usually means that yields. Are driven or are going lower, which will then naturally also drive dollar JPY lower. But here, um, it's very similar. You can see that here in my slide. Um, <clears throat> I expect a flush into 139, which we haven't seen yet. So that's something which will, which will be of interest probably the next trading week. And then we want to see if this holds. So it's a little longer term. If I'm trading equities, um, I'm very short term oriented. If I trade FX or commodities like gold, for example, I tend to, to have a higher time frame. So let's see the upcoming days if 139 can be hold. <clears throat> um, and then if so, I think a deep run above 140 is, is possible. Still, we need to keep in mind, first of all, US dollar has already seen some significant strength over the last um, 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 months, <laughs> weeks, um, days. But um, there's also potentially um, um, the, the Bank of Japan, which will step in and say, we have to make sure that uh, the JPY is not 
crushed in a way it's currently crushed because because we are we are importing inflation into Japan and, and need to keep an eye on this and and we'll probably intervene to some extent and this is something which is noteworthy because um, J- Japan is in fact the biggest holder of U.S. Treasuries worldwide. It's not the Chinese, not anymore, but it's um, first of all it's uh, um, um, the, the biggest creditor of the U.S. and in fact Japan and so they have enough ammunition in this case to intervene and 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 drive um, the U.S. dollar lower against the JPY if they plan to stabilize um, JPY, respectively, if they plan to intervene and um, um, go still go for their for their yield curve control. So a little more complex in terms of FX, a little more complex in terms of um, 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 of, of gold. So that one main reason is because the picture is clearer. I, I'd like to focus and and go um, uh, the the. the the way with least resistance, let's say. That's why I focus here on um, on on the on the Nasdaq. And now, well, you can see that twelve three can be hold. That 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 looks promising. That looks certainly promising. So um, we 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 saw a flush short, short, yeah shortly after the non farm payrolls. Now we saw another flush into the opening. I'm still not long, but again, if we make it above twelve thousand four hundred, if we go green for um not green in comparison to yesterday's closing price, but for the day, intraday. And if we push above 12,400, I think we we have some room to go on the upside. So 12 to six, probably 12, eight in the days to come um, is certainly a target on the upside and everything um, based on this this news release. So it's not that that we um, 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 use this solely for intraday purposes, but also to give an idea, or to have an idea on where to see the advantage in the upcoming days. And um that's it. Yeah, that's it from my end. So I hope you enjoyed um, this this webinar as much as I did presenting it to you. And um, so if you if you liked what you witnessed, um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below the video. The recording here on YouTube will be released in a few seconds, a few, few minutes probably. Um, and uh, leave a thumb up here if you if you like the webinar. And um, I really look forward to the upcoming fundamental news events. In this case, the Fed then in two weeks from now. I really look forward to it to present to you once again. Then we don't have the release, but we have the chance to formulate um, scenarios and then take it from there. So now have a nice weekend and um, enjoy yourself. Talk to you again in two weeks. All the best. See you. Bye-bye.